Welcome to Creating Formulas and Variables. My name is Michael Ward, and I will be your instructor for this module. Lesson topics to include creating formulas. The first thing we're going to talk about is how to stick a formula in a report block. Formulas are stuck to a row or column or a cell within your document, and that's what a formula is by definition. Uh, it's limited to that specific spot, so I can't really use that formula anywhere else. But a formula is a quick and easy way to stick a typical arithmetic calculation as a column in a report. Instead, what I could have also done was created a variable. Now, a variable is much more powerful than a formula in light of the fact that it's independent. It's not stuck to a row or a column. It actually shows up under the variables folder on the left side as an extended variable to be used in that document that you're creating. It can be used throughout the document on multiple report tabs, in multiple blocks, reports, charts. It's almost like it's an extension of your universe. All of the reporting functions that can be applied also against a variable. If you have a choice, you always try to create a variable directly. But oftentimes that doesn't happen. We create a formula column and we realize later on I limited myself with that formula to that column. So there's an automatic feature built into the product that says, hey, don't worry about it. I'll show you how to take that formula, convert it to a variable, with his, which is nothing more than giving it a name, and now it becomes a more permanent local variable within the document and it's multifunctional. And one other thing, variables can be inside other variable calculations inside of other variable calculations. Yes, I can nest things multiple levels. Formulas are too restrictive. They're limited to a specific row or column. Once I create a variable, I can edit it and make changes to it and enhance it and revise it. And we'll have a series of demos that will show you building formulas, building variables, and the process of converting a formula directly to a variable. So what are we going to cover in terms of content for variables and functions? We're going to start by creating a formula directly within a vertical table report. Then we're going to show you how to take that formula, find out what limits you have by doing it as a formula, and then we're going to convert it to a variable using the built-in feature that makes it so easy to do. And then we're going to show you how to create the variable directly. And frankly, that's what you're going to do most of the time. Create a whole collection of variables, local variables. They'll store them under the variables tab under your available objects list, and now they're there available to you as well. You might think about having those added in as universe objects in the future if there are many of you creating the same variables for your documents. You can edit variables as well, and you need to do that as calculations change and revise and so on, and extend it out even further. And of course, I can remove a variable, but this can be a very dangerous proposition. What if that variable is buried inside of another variable calculation inside of another variable calculation? You run the risk of creating a hole and causing a ripple effect for variables that are now going to have error conditions as you go through. So removing a variable, you must be very, very cautious. And of course, we have operators and functions that we'll be covering. Operators are your typical plus and minus, slash and division, and all the other things that you're used to doing as well. And then we're going to take some time to go through the function library and give you a, a real good look at some of the many functions that are available, standard part of formulas and variables. To create a formula initially, what you've got to do is using the formula editor, you first have to insert a column or a row in the block that you're in in order to open up the formula editor and then define it. Right now it's showing us that when I click on a particular cell in the body of the cross table, what that object is, in this case it's margin. If I want to create a variable buttons over to left of it, I can use that to create the variable directly from a formula. So as you follow that formula bar across, you'll see the green check and the cancel. The check means I just changed something in the formula section, apply it. The X means cancel it. Now where have we seen that before? Probably in our Excel spreadsheets and working with those. The third button over, as you see, is the create variable button used exclusively for converting a formula to a variable. And then the formula editor on the end allows you to open up the formula editor directly in the full window with all the different sections that make it up that we'll be covering later on as well. And of course the validate buttons we covered there to make sure that you've covered it correctly. 
When you save a formula as a variable, it results in some nice savings. Number one, faster calculation time. It's already defined, so it's going to be calculated locally and retrieved rather than being actually calculated on the fly if it's a formula. It simplifies other formulas and variables. Now, what does that mean? That means I can use that calculation inside of other calculations that are formulas or variable calculations uh, and use them any way that I possibly want. There are no limits whatsoever. Once you start building complex variable calculations and nesting them inside of others, be very careful with maintenance. What you change and what you eliminate so you don't create extra problems. I can reuse them from report to report. Now what this means is report tab to report tab. The terminology in the world of business objects, in the world of Webby, is we're creating a document that has multiple report tabs or reports. And that's what we're talking about in this example as well. And it's viewable from an available objects window. So any variable that I create will show up in the formula or variable window as if it were an extension of my universe. And you think about it, that's really what it is, right? So to, we're going to talk from a variable's perspective, creating and editing and then removing. The removing is the piece we must be very careful with. Variables can be created from scratch or they can be created by converting a formula to a variable. In either case, it doesn't matter. Once it's a variable, you can then edit it and you can revise it. And of course, you can remove it as well. A formula that's stuck to a column in a report, if you remove that block out of the report, the formula disappears because it was inherent within the block that was in by deleting or removing the block, you've now removed the formula and you'll have to recreate it in another block should you want to do that. So creating a variable here, here's an example where we selected down at the bottom new variable right off of the variables tab with a right click of our mouse. However, if you go to the data access tab on top, the one in the middle that we've been using to edit and you go to the right side, there's also a feature called new variable there as well. Right? And the variable editor opens up one of the first things you should get into the habit of doing is putting a name for your variable. Now rest assured you won't have to worry about creating a complex formula down below that section for getting into putting in a name and lose it because it will not let you do an OK until you've put a name in there and of course define some type of calculation or whatever it's doing in the formula section of the variable editor box. And that completes the module on creating formulas and variables.